Hi, I'm Andrew Watson. Thanks for joining me for my weekly guitar blog. It's December 22nd, 2013, and this week I've decided to title the guitar blog Picking Practice Fundamentals. I chose this title by way of a question that was sent in from Brad. He's in New South Wales, Australia, and his email was... I've been working a lot on my picking technique, but it's really not going very well. I'm trying to create licks and all that stuff, but there must be some exact picking ideas that I should be focusing on. For example, I'm pretty bad with position shifting, sweeping technique, and down picking. I think there must be a lot more I could be doing to improve my picking. Any suggestions from Brad in New South Wales, Australia? Well, hey, thanks for writing in, Brad. You know, nearly every guitar player who wants to get better at picking eventually incorporates a very concise picking technique practice guide into their playing routine. And although scales make up an important part in a routine like this, a much better approach is to work on position studies, isolating the specific areas of alternate picking, down picking, up picking, sweep picking, also often called rake technique, and how to maintain consistent picking flow playing through position shifts along the neck. Now, there are plenty of other subgroups, but initially I'd suggest starting with these and then branching out further as time goes on. So let's hit the fingerboard and get started. Well, since there's such a close relationship between scale practice and picking practice, I wanted to begin with a common scale pattern and just help shine a spotlight on the advantages that incorporating scales can offer us when we're developing our picking up to higher levels. So uh, mm. here's the uh, common scale pattern of a fifth string root uh, major scale shape. It's built from the tonic of an E at the fifth string seventh fret. So we have an E major scale here. It goes like this. So I played that just now using all alternate picking technique, which is of course just uh, consistent down and up picking. But next on the same scale pattern, I want to switch over to uh, another important uh, idea, which is exclusive down picking only. So here's the same scale played with strict down picking only. Now we're going to flip over and do nothing but exclusive up picks. Now I think it's very important to study with those three areas in mind as well as uh, maybe on some off days add in some uh, palm muting. So just take your palm and put it onto the strings where they're rolling over the saddles there and just get that sort of muffled sound going on as well. It's very good to practice uh, some days with muting technique, as well as some days if you have an electric guitar with distortion on your guitar. So you want to learn how to control the overdrive sound and uh, doing these exercises with uh, distortion, with a clean channel sound, with muting, with the you know with no muting where the strings are open, and in, of course utilizing the uh, alternate picking, the all down picking, and the all up picking. It's all going to really help you quite a lot in your uh, quest for being a great uh, picker. So uh, let's switch gears here and using the same scale layout I'd like to move into another process known of as scale sequencing. Now scale sequencing is an excellent picking study for us since it's the act of creating a recurring note pattern that holds a similar interval movement through the uh, tones of the scale. So it's always usually diatonic and you know once we determine our sequence of notes and develop the sequence we can really place our focus upon picking technique. So in my second example I've established a sequence and I'll begin by playing through it using only alternate picking technique. Okay, next I'll apply all down picking. the last one here, all up picking. So uh, same kind of thing supply, you can uh, work on this with distortion, with a clean channel sound, you know, get going on there with uh, some of the muting technique. 
all that stuff. The same stuff we talked about in our first example, just apply the same rules uh, to this one. Now, uh, the next concept I want to move on into is the importance of the creation of picking patterns for practicing what is, uh, is you know, what it's like to actually perform lines, basically. The example I have here moves through only a few strings of the same scale pattern here, the E major, but uh, it does contain a string skip, which can add to the technical difficulty a little bit. So uh, here it is applying uh, just ex exclusively uh, alternate picking. We're going to uh, come from the E note, jump to the fifth, and then come back to the major third, to the perfect fourth, head over to the major second, back to the third, then to the root. Okay, then on the second one that would be in the next measure, we're going to head across, doing string, you know, an octave over to the string skip of the uh, third string there, and then the same other notes that we had from the first measure. So here's the uh, first measure again, second measure. And you want to just put those back to back as an exercise. Now, this is just one example of an exercise you could develop, but I would say, I, I would actually recommend coming up with maybe two or three of these a week and just, you know, add some in, maybe uh, develop a, a quantity of 10 or 12 of these. And then, you know, as you get bored of some of them, just start adding new ones on. But uh, it's really important to have the creation of picking patterns that are just short melodic concepts that do not have to be very long. You can incorporate all kinds of ideas within them, uh, you know, string skipping, and you could still do all your down picks, your up picks, your muting techniques, all that stuff, work on them with a you know, distortion, without distortion, and so on and so forth. But uh, anyway, let's move along here. I want to move to the concept of doing what's often called rake technique, or, you know, also commonly known of as the uh, sweep pick. Now, you know, this whole sweep picking or rake picking, however you want to name it, you know, it involves um, a smooth execution of notes across multiple string sets. So it's very, you know, hard for a lot of people to get this down at first. And I think the hardest part of the technique is actually the act of keeping the fretboard fingers in perfect synchronization. You know, as we move along with the picking hand, it sweeps across each string. We want the notes, you know, while we're going through the uh, tracking of both left and right hands to be very concise, you know, when we're adding those fretted notes in. But, you know, work on it. After the sweep has become smooth, uh, I think it's important to start speeding them up and, you know, definitely work with a metronome. Uh, if you prefer starting out by just tracking notes, you know, just muting the strings, cover the strings up, and just start working on something like this. You do four strings. You could even start with just two, you know. Branch out to three. Go to four. Go to five. Go to all six. And just try to get that smooth execution of all the strings where the pick is really raking across in a very consistent manner. So um, here's my uh, first exercise. We're just going to take an F major arpeggio and go across that arpeggio, stopping on the first string from the fifth. So we're going eight, seven, five, six, five, carrying through the notes of F, A, C, F, and A. Keep them nice and smooth and consistent. And as you get better with it, you know, you can speed it up, turn on a metronome. You can even practice going up and then adding a note and then coming back down, you know, so you're ascending and descending. But that gets to be a lot harder. You know, it's easier to just go upwards in the beginning. You know, you can develop it as time goes on, though. Now, my second example is going to run from the sixth string. It's going to be a C major arpeggio. And we're going to run from sixth string across to second, but we're going to add in a note on top of the phrase as sitting as the final note as this, uh, it's going to be a G actually coming in on the second guitar string. So we're going to go across and then we're going to have an up pick to grab that final note. So just take your time with it. And as you know, it goes on and on, you can start getting some speed, turn on a metronome, get really fluent. But uh, rake technique is, you know, it's not that bad. It might take a while to uh, really develop it so you're happy with it. I know one of the things that uh, players will really get down on themselves for is, you know, as they're going and developing this, you know, technique, all of a sudden they'll play one flub note and they'll feel like, oh, I, you know, the, the line was ruined, you know, or I just played it terrible. You know, it's because there's one flub note in there. 
you know, a lot of these guys, when you see them uh, shred out this stuff or who are really into sweep picking, they're usually using distortion when they're doing large sweep patterns. And, you know, if you miss a note slightly, you, don't, you can't even tell, especially how fast some of the players will go. Um, so... Anyway, keep all that stuff in mind. Don't get too hard on yourself. It's just not worth it. Uh, but let's move on uh, to my final example, which is going to be the concept of position shifts. You know, it's another challenging concept for guitar players who are trying to really polish up on their picking technique. See, when we're making a position shift, we're climbing vertically through multiple positions on the neck. So our distance that's between the fretboard hand and the picking hand starts shrinking or it's moving you know, apart as we're you know, going the opposite direction, if we're, you know, depending on whether we're ascending or descending. So with that change occurring between the fretboard hand and the picking hand, um, it's, it can be really challenging you know, with that distance factor between left and right hands, you know, and it plays a, a role when you're trying to synchronize things, uh, as well as uh, how the picking is operating between adjacent strings. You know, it's, going to be a little bit of a challenge uh, as you want to build things faster. So we have to build a very consistent picking ability when we're applying technique uh, around the melodic ideas of position shift along the neck. And in my final example, a position uh, shifting line is going to be uh, done here using uh, alternate picking again. Uh, but of course, you could do it with all downs and all ups. Uh, I'm just trying to save time on the video here. But um, we're going to do alternate picking coming through an A major scale, starting from fifth uh, position, traveling all the way up to the tenth position. So here it is slowly, coming uh, in triplets. So we have one end, a two end, a, and then we're moving up the neck, three end, a four end. A. We're gonna shift up again. We're gonna have ninth, 11th, and 12th on that fourth string. Then we're gonna have nine, 11, and 13, and then resolve finally up on that high 10th fret. So here it is again. time. Again. Well, most guitar players don't exactly start off as very competent pickers. We actually tend to begin with chords. And, you know, the technique development we learn with chords does have some bearing for when we shift into the world of picking. See, picking has a lot to do with economy of motion. And one of the early realizations we have during the study of chords is that our success with changing chords depends a lot on how quickly and easily we can advance one to the next. And this also is the model that we need to focus on when uh, we're dealing with picking technique as well. Our consistency and our skill with picking patterns and how economical we can develop them makes a huge impact upon the overall smoothness that we'll be shooting for when we need a good picking technique when we're playing songs or composing or arranging music. Anyway, that's about all the time I have for today. As always, thanks for watching. Have yourself a great week and we'll catch up with you next time. Bye for now.